What's going on? Welcome back. Today we will be talking about Windows Core processes. As an analyst or as a security analyst or forensic investigator or even incident responder, when you analyze a Windows workstation uh, for malicious or for indications or indicators of compromise, or suppose that you suspect that the, uh, the machine is infected with malware, you want to understand the Windows Core processes and you want to know what is a normal behavior of these processes because often too much these processes get infected or get uh, injected actually or malicious um, malware let me say they use these kind of processes for hooking or they create uh, processes with similar names just to mislead analysts or users from uh, the, the detection so basically that's what we'll be talking about today now, the first thing about system processes or the core processes is that we have a hierarchy. Understanding, it, understanding this hierarchy is half the way of understanding the Windows core processes. As you can see here, the first Windows core process is the system process. Technically, the system process, uh, the definition, as per the definition, is the home for a special kind of thread that runs only in kernel mode a kernel mode system threat. System threats have all the attributes and context of regular user mode threats, but are different in that they run only in kernel in kernel mode, executing code loaded in system space, whether that is in NT OS kernel log exe or in any other loaded device driver. That is the definition from Microsoft for the system process. So technically, that's the first. Uh, process and it's responsible for uh, loading the, the Windows system. So after that process, we have the session manager subsystem here, or the Windows session manager. This process is responsible for creating new sessions for the users. So technically, uh, under this process, we got many child processes. We have the client server uh, communications we have the windows initialize and we have the user initialize so basically what is the job of session um, manager subsystem so as i said earlier it is responsible for creating new sessions for the users and under that uh, process we have these processes so what is the job of every single process of these so first we have the client server runtime process, which is the user mode side of the subsystem, Windows subsystem or the session manager subsystem. The client server runtime process here is very critical to the system operation. If you terminate this process or any one of these processes, you will experience interruptions in the Windows uh, or in the uh, function of the Windows. You may experience shutdown of the Windows as well. So technically speaking, the client server runtime process is responsible for the Win32 console window and the process thread creation and deletion. So just memorize that the client server runtime process is responsible for thread creation and deletion. Thread is part of a process. And you can, you can say that uh, this process actually is responsible for uh, making Windows API calls for other processes, mapping drive letters, and handling the Windows shutdown process. So it's very critical to the system function here, client server runtime process. Try to, try to memorize the uh, full name of these processes. All right, now let's talk about the Windows initialization process. So what is the job of this process here? Another critical process. Uh, actually, this process is responsible for launching the services. That's why the services process here is considered as a child process to the Windows initialization. Why? Because Windows initialization process is responsible for launching services or the service control manager. Also is responsible for launching the local security authority which is responsible for managing user accounts, authentication, and whatsoever. And that's why the LSAS process here is uh, child to Windows initialization process. Okay, so that's for the Windows initialization. Now let's talk about the services here. So as the name suggests, it is the Surface Control Manager. 
The primary responsibility for this project is to handle system services, loading services, interacting with services, starting, ending services, and it maintains a database of services that can be queried with the, the prominent tool. Uh, if you have heard about this tool called sc.exe, so there's a tool to manage the services here called sc.exe. Okay. So now we've talked about services, we've talked about else, uh, Windows Initialize. Now let's talk about the child process here, service host. This process has been the victim of many uh, scenarios. This process here, the service host, has been the victim of many instances of um, process hooking injection by malwares. So be aware to, if you are analyzing uh, an affected host, be sure to analyze the or this process extensively during your analysis. Because as I said earlier, it is used many, in many uh, scenarios by malwares to just hide in plain sight, like we said. Okay, so what is the job of SV host or service host process? Actually, it's just hosting and managing Windows services. Okay. And it is parent as a child to the services of the XE, which is also child to the Windows initialization, which is also child to the session manager subsystem process. Now let's talk about LSAS. So LSAS is the local secu security authority subsystem service. And actually, it, it enforces the security policy on the system. That's why it's called Local Security Authority. Um, the job of LSAS is to verify users logging on to the Windows, handling password changes, and creating access tokens as well. Okay, now what else we have? We have the user initialize. User initialize kind of process that is when executed. It executes another process, which is explorer.exe. Once explorer.exe is launched, user initialize is terminated. Uh, it's self-terminated, right? And you got the explorer.exe, which is responsible for um, providing functionality to other features, such as start menu, taskbar, and it can uh, it, it lets you uh, access the folders and files when you work in Windows. Okay, so that is for the theoretical ex uh, explanation. Let's talk about how we can understand the normal behavior of each process so that we pin down the malicious processes if they are uh, named after these processes during your analysis. Okay, so it's recommended to use a process hacker when you analyze system processes. All right, now, as you can see, we have the first process, which is system. We, talk we talked about this. If you want to analyze this process and we want to make sure that the original process is running so we have to go to properties and understand the properties of this um, service uh, process as you can see here it's verified by windows and the image file name lies under system 32 so the image file name is one critical characteristic of a process if you see a process that is not in system 32 maybe in D, desktop, downloads, and it is listed as a system process, then it is definitely a malicious one. Another critical characteristic is the parent. So for the system process, the parent is system idle process. Uh, let's look, take a look again. And of course, there is no current directory, there is no command line. If you see command line or current directory for these kind of processes, such as the system, then it is definitely a malicious one. So we just have to uh, go over specific characteristics, such as the image file name, the parent, and make sure they are actually, uh, they match these values. If you see a difference, then you have to raise the red flags. Okay. So now we talked about the system. Let's talk about the process below it, which is the Windows Session Manager. Let's take a look, properties. Okay, in here we see that the image file name is under System32, which is normal since this is a Windows process. 
we see the command line is launching the process and we see here the parent the current directory is windows we see also the parent which is system these indicators mean that the process here is actually a windows process and it is healthy once we see a difference in these values then this it is time to call this project as malicious okay let's close now let's go over the client server client server yeah client server runtime process properties so what is normal here so the process is in system 32 and the this is the command line or this is the command for launching this process and as you can see the parent is 742 non-existent process Now, any variances in these values indicate that there is a high chance of malicious process masquerading as a system process. All right, that's for the client server runtime. Now, let's talk about other processes. So basically, here we got the Windows or Windows Start Application, Windows Win Initialized. Let's talk about this. All right, so we initialize, actually it is uh, the, the, the uh, image file, as you can see, the path is in system 32, since it is a Windows process, so it is very normal that the process lives under the system 32. We see here the same non-existent process PID for the Windows initialize, it is the same as the client server runtime process. Why? Because actually the parent process is the same. That's why the PID or the parent here is the same. Um, yep, that's for the win initialize. Now let's talk about the process or the child process of the win initialize, which is the service control manager. So as you can see, the parent is win initialize. And that's very critical. If you see it, other process that is parent for the services of TXE, it means that the service you're analyzing is not the Windows uh, process. We see here the uh, image the, the image file name contains system 52, and we see here that you see the command line and the current directory. Okay, below the Windows initialize, we got services, and below services, we got the SV host. This was actually, as we said earlier, it is the victim of all uh, of many malwares. Actually, that's why let's take uh, an extensive look at this process and understand it. So basically, the first thing is the image file name. First, it has to be in system thirty two, and here, uh, let's see here. So what do we have? So we have the command line. As you can see, the command line contains dash k. So Dash K means, uh, it is a parameter actually, for grouping the services to share the same process. So as you can see here, let's take a look at SVHost. SVHost contains many child processes, and it is normal since it manages the services. Okay, so SVHost, it hosts and manages services. So it is very normal to see many services uh, running as a processes under SV host, okay, but it is very important to understand that all of these processes are launched with the dash K option, so all of them are grouped under the same process, which is a very which is a, a, a um, let me say it is highlighted attributes of a healthy and normal SV host is to contain many processes. If you see if you see single SV host like these. Uh, you may be aware that you need to analyze them. Yeah, it is normal to find many SV hosts individually, but of course, it doesn't mean that they are healthy, right? You need to analyze them. So that is the first indicator of a healthy SV host process, the dash K option. Okay, another one is if we take a look at the parent, we see the parent is the services process, okay? Which means that the uh, SV host now passed the second check mark. Now, we need to now take a look at the DLLs of these services. So if you right click on 
SV host and go to services, DCOM launch, go to service. Okay, as you can see, this is the DCOM launch. If you right click properties, we see here the DLL. Okay. Now, from the screenshot, we see also the binary path. As you can see, there is dash K, the option we talked about. Um, what else? All right, let's, let's go back. Let's take a look at this SV host. Go to services. So here we don't have DCOM, right? Oh, go to service. Okay, go to service. Now right click properties. Also, we see here dash K and the DLL is in system 32. So this is also SV host, a healthy SV host or original SV host. Uh, properties again, we see here the parent is services and the, the dash the K option is here. Right click again and go to, um, let's see here, services, go to service, right click local session manager properties, see here, highlight the DLL and highlight the dash K option. That's how we examine the service host process. All right, now let's go to another process. So let's minimize this. Yep. So here we look at, um, let's see here. Let's take a look at the win look on. Right click. This is also another system process. As you can see, the image file name contains system32. And if we check the uh, command line, we see the command for launching the process. And here we, we got the parent, which is system process. All right. So let me collapse the Windows initialize. See what else do we have. Oh, SS. So SSAT is the local security authority process, which is a child process uh, of initialize, Windows initialize. Let's take a look at the normal highlighters. So we see here system32, we see the parent is Windows initialize, and we see the command line. Okay. Win look on, we took a, we took a look at win look on. Let's, let's take a look at explorer.exe. Properties. So this is the healthy path. And this is the healthy command. And as you can see, non-existent process. It is very normal for Win Explorer to contain a non-existent process because the uh, process responsible for launching this process actually itself terminates uh, when Explorer is launched. All right. Now, what is uh, abnormal about this process is to have TCP connections. All right. It is abnormal for the Explorer process to have TCP connections or to contact uh, third parties or perform DNS queries. So if we take a look at, um, let's see, modules, discount network. Now, as you can see, there is no uh, network activity, which is very normal and healthy. If we see network activity, uh, we want to take a look and analyze more because it is abnormal for the Explorer.exe process to have network activity. So that is about understanding and analyzing Windows query processes. Make sure to uh, research more into this topic if you want to get more information or more extensive details about that. But if you are just analyzing an affected Windows host and you, you, you don't want to uh, get lost between these processes and other malicious processes, it's very uh, important to understand the concepts uh, laid down in this video. So that is for today and see you in the next video.